Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the select widget and I'm going to show you how to configure it and how to make use of the select widget. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. Alright, so to get started, let's bring in a select widget into the canvas and I'm just going to drag a select widget right here. And then we have the select widget showing up on the canvas. And the first property we can actually edit on the select widget is the widget name. So here, by default, it has an auto-generated name, but we can go update this to something more memorable. And I'm going to call this my select. And you can see we have my select showing up. So we can go reference this widget using my select wherever in our application we need to read data from the select widget. Moving on, we also have the options property, and this is an array of objects that each object has a label and a value and this data is used to actually build the select widget so you can see that this has three objects in, inside of it and each of these objects has um, a label and value and you can go check out what we have in the select widget you can see we have those options being built out on the select widget this is really useful if you want to build static data so all you need to do is just add um, another item into this array and you have that showing up on the select widget. But in some cases, you would want the options for the select widgets to be built from a DB query or an API call. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. So going to the data source section, I have this simple query called get users and it is an SQL query that returns a list of users and each user has an email and a name. So I'm going to build a list of user select using this query. So let's go write some JavaScript to do just that. So to write some JavaScript, I would need to access the query. So this is going to be get users the data and I can do a dot map on this and return an object that has a label, which will be the user's name and a value which will be the user's email. And we can go take a look at what we have in the select widget. And you can see that we have users coming from the DB query showing up on the select widget. So this is how you build dynamic options when you need to pull the options from an API call or a DB query. All right, moving on, we have the default option. And this is the option that is selected by default. Mind you, this has to be the value of that option. So I'm just going to paste in the email for Jack and you can see we have Jack selected by default. So if you want an option to be selected by default, you can go specify a default option for that particular value or for that particular user in this case. All right, we also have the um, label text and this is the text that shows up here. So we can update this to users and you see we have the text users showing. So it makes it easy for the user of the application to know that um, he is required to go select a user from this list. So you can easily specify that in the label text. And for placeholder, this serves as a guide that makes it easy to also let the user know what to do on this input. So this is very useful if you don't have a default option selected. So we can say something like select a user. And you can see we have the message here letting the user know um, he's required to go select a user showing up on the select widget. So that's the placeholder value. We also have values for or properties for the required state. Um, turning this on will disable form submission. It's actually built to be used with the form widget we have right here. So it's going to disable form submission until the user actually goes in to select an item from the select widget. So let's turn this off. You have the visible property, which would make the app visible or not, depending on the state this property is on whenever the application is deployed. You have the disabled property, which would make it such that uh, the select widget wouldn't take any user input. So you can turn that on if you want to. You have the animate loading state, and this makes it such that there's a little bit of animation on the widget, especially when properties of this widget is being pulled from an API call or a DB query. So for example, we have the options being built from a DB query. So if I go to reload the app, you would notice that there's a bit of loading state on the select widget. I think I have the animate loading turned on. Yes, I do. So let's go reload the app. And you can see that there was an animation for a split second right there. So you can choose to show animations or not by turning on the animate loading state. 
You can also make the select widget filterable. So if I turn this on and go check out the widget, you see that we now have a little search filter that makes it easy for us to search for users. So we can search for John, for example, and we're able to see John on this list. But we can make this search more powerful by turning on the server side filtering. This is also very useful if you are building the list from an API call or a DB query. So you can turn on server side filtering, which makes it possible for the filtering to happen on your backend or on your database. So when this is turned on, it generates a new option called on filter updates. And I'm going to quickly show you how to make use of this. So let's make it possible that um, we have server side filtering configured for the get user query. So let's go back. And what I'm going to do here is to add a simple where statement, name is like, and for the pattern, I'm just going to say the name must contain whatever is entered into my select dot filter text. And right now we don't have anything imputed. So let's go set this up so that we can make use of this. The last thing we need to do for setup is we need to make sure that whenever the filter is updated we actually go to execute the get user query so that we have that query be executed whenever the filter text here changes so i can enter a text for example like j for example and you can see that there's a loading state and then the values in the input widget was actually updated and you can see we have um the search being performed on the server side. In this case, the search is being performed on the database. So this is very useful if you have a long list and you want it to be filterable on your server side or on the backend. All right, so that's for the server side filtering. For styles, you can actually go into style the label you have right here. So you can go into set a color for the label and you have that color showing up. You can set a size for the text and you can also configure the font style a bit if you want to use in the font style controls here. For actions, we already saw the on filter update action. You also have the on option change action. And this is when the user actually goes in to select an option from the list. Whenever a user selects an option from the list, you can go to run any of these predefined actions, or you can go write some JavaScript to perform some custom action you want to be executed. So this has been the select widget. I hope you found this guide helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section and I'll be sure to take your questions. All right, that'll be all for today's video. Till I see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.